Hello there and welcome back to episode 8 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 65. And today we will make a little city out of this small village or huge village, big village, whatever. We are right now pretty much in the transition phase between village and city. We have almost 300 people and our economy food economy is going strong and all those things are working out really well there's now two things that we need to take care of first of all we need to fit into the shoes that we have now or that we are wearing now so to speak because if you check out the range of our food stall that's the light gray area you will notice quickly that a big part of this entire city has no more access to its services this is really bad if you keep going like that people will become more and more unhappy and this will turn into a problem eventually therefore the very first thing that we need to do today is we're going to go and press left shift and left click above that food stall and we just pick up that little thingy and carry it over to this spot here. It's one of my favorite ways of just getting stuff transported where I need it and we're going to do the same thing for the market though I must say here I'm not happy with how I constructed it we could expand on that so we're pressing control left control left click so we can draw a new market over at this place probably doing a little bit of a smaller one because i was a little bit too megalomaniac there happens it's not that much of a big deal all right so we're going to make it work out like that so we got three employees it's not too much of a burden in terms of furniture and let's fire that off Okay, so as usual, our odd jobbers are not really up to the strength that we need them. And we're going to authorize a big swarm of new people. 20 people are quite a burden to take up in one go, as you will now really notice that you have more people to feed. We're also going to stop uh, training new people currently. I want as many people as possible to work for me. And we are now a... Legati, whatever that means. We have access now to guard posts, scaffolds, and stocks, and we have more access to nobles. I went over the whole deal with the nobles between the episodes. The whole big issue there is to host nobles. You need chambers, and chambers are a real massacre to your resources. Technically, it would be possible to import cut stone and gemstone to host nobles right now. Practically, I don't feel like it's a real feasible thing to do. I will introduce how nobles work over this series, but not at this time. Just uh, meant to do this as a heads up. Now, other services that the city does need, of course, if you check out the lavatory, you will see that it's quite a long walk from the fields to the next place to relieve yourself. So we're going to copy that as well. And most importantly, we will also bring up the janitor. Seriously, never, never, never ever forget bringing up new janitors workplaces. These are absolutely mandatory. And I'm setting that guy up a little bit more into this direction so he can take over the radius of work down there. Because I'm currently expanding the city towards this fine place. This Jacket Wasteland is a huge reservoir of coal. We can create one hell of a mine there and give you a proper tutorial about mining while we're at it. And at the same time, we can procure the coal that we need for our purposes later down the road. But currently, I'm not interested in that as there's just too many things at once that we need to get done. All right. From the odd jobbers that we got, I am going to pick up 10 of them and put them over into the research department. We really need more research going as technology is now the key stone to our progress. You see, we do have a bit of a problem with our food production. The farms here 
still run by Protonians are not as efficient as we need them to be. Luckily, technology can come in helpful here. I also want to pinpoint a bit of a useful information that might be helpful to you. You can always have a readout here about roughly how much knowledge will be accessible to you over the course of the time. And if you go on over here, you see that we have currently an allocated amount of 1,300 points. We have a preview of that. So that means we will roughly have 1,000 science points to work with from here on. Science points are one of the most important currencies in Songs of Six and they are quite annoying to to acquire because as you see you have to dump workforce permanently on that stuff and they'll never come back they'll be stuck in that lab forever and therefore yeah spend your technology points wisely that's what i'm trying to say and therefore if you ever made a decision that you regret you can always move on over to the technology area and you can hold left shift and left click on a technology and you will gain the points back into your frozen pool. Your frozen pool will melt over the course of the time and give back those tech points. You don't get, get them back when, in one go, you have to unlock them slowly again. But this is a ways and means if you feel like you have invested into something that you really don't need to get them back. or invest temporarily into something that you currently need and don't need it later so you can get those points back. There's several ways how you can do it. For example, I do already plan to reallocate these points in hunting as my Protonian city doesn't really want that meat too badly. So we will unlock for today the metal smelter because like I said, this is the thing that we're going to get ourselves into next. Metal production is amazing, as it is one of the materials that you will require more and more in more sophisticated buildings. And it is also stupidly valuable. That's another beautiful thing about metal. To give you a bit of a perspective, we can import iron ore at a cost of 20 to 25 here at these blocks. If we import metal directly, you see that we are suffering from like a eightfold price or something like that. This is really harsh. And even if you start exporting these, wait a sec, these empty ones have, <laughs> that's stupid. We don't need workers on empty export posts. So if you check out the export of these, you still get a hundred 227 bucks out of these so even if you don't have anything where you need them currently you can just sell off what you have there as the import of coal is dirty cheap i really gotta say at this point coal production doesn't uh, really pay off for the city as we can import it from outside way too easily but you know that's always the th the thing your city is every city is different you might end up with a city that doesn't have neighbors with access to coal like that, and so you have to produce it yourself. Every game is different in, in Songs of Six, that's why I cherish the game so much. And while we're waiting on these buildings until they're done, there has been a constant sentiment in the comment section between hand-cutting trees and auto-cutting trees. So I want to point it out clear. The woodcutter is actually inferior to micromanaging cutting trees in my experiences. I have never crunched the numbers in all honesty, but I did notice that I just end up with more wood than that. But woodcutters have the advantage that you will never run out of wood because you went on a brain fart and uh, while you were designing your new city district you ran out of wood and your entire economy crash landed. That's what woodcutters save you from. So, just to give you an idea. So we have somebody who died from cold out here. So this is always a foolproof way to, to give you an idea <laughs> where they need a hearth. So, yeah, poor, poor guy. We, we're going to name that hearth after you. So, as long as you have graveyards, your subjects, by the way, won't be minding uh, the, the occasional death too much. As a matter of fact, this city is actually quite the utopia. 
So all in all, as long as there are spots for people to get buried at, don't you worry too much if somebody has to bite the dust. It's pretty normal. And it's also worth noting that the spots at the... Um, why are you guys freezing You're right next to hearths? Um, that the spots where... Where was I? Dang it. Those cold, de these, those cold deaths were... Uh, pushing me out of my train of thought. Well... Ah yeah, now I knew again. So these spots at the graveyard, they they will get uh, freed up after a while again. So everybody gets buried at one of these spots. I don't know why we have it not available yet, but uh, they they decompose basically, and then you get the, the spot, spots back. So here also, by the way, we see a typical early game situation. This is a pretty cold winter, as it seems. The production of drink and clothing is not holding up with the consumption. This is, by the way, perfectly normal. I've never been able to get up an economy that was providing enough of everything. We need to get up the numbers over the course of the time, but you will already notice the difference between having this partial fulfillment of the needs versus not at all. You know, if it's, it looks as if it is not working, but check out the numbers on your taverns and your equipment to get a proper indication of what's going on there. So, just as a side note. But what's clearly noticeable here is that our food clock is dropping. Of course it does. We have employed a lot of new people after all, and we still can't stop here. So as you see there, you will, quickly run into the situation where you will either have to import more and more food from outside sources, which is by all means a feasible choice. For example, I see such a cheap market for fruit here that I totally will crank up the numbers to 50 person. So my people will be a little bit chill, uh, more chill about that topic. But we will also go at the same time into agricultural tech. If you play Cratonian, this is a foolproof choice to invest your research points into one way or another, but it binds a ton of tech points. As you see, it is 500 tech points, and that is by far one of the most expensive ones that you can spend your money on early. So, in short terms, I would always recommend you to go for other technologies first or other ways and means to fulfill the needs of your citizens who need for food before you start researching farm tech. I don't know if it gets balanced a little bit down, as currently I see it pretty uh, harsh, the pricing I mean, but yeah, here we are going to just go back into import. Importing is never a bad thing in my experience, even if you are producing the things on your own. As we see here, our farms are not as productive as we need them to be for the entirety of the city. Anyways, back to this place. As we now see, the service situation is has gone from this bad to this good. And this bad was the point where we expand the city without providing new services for everybody. It's really important that you stretch out your net of services carefully, as for example here, degradation will start to become an issue if, uh, if we don't get ourselves a janitor down. These things, they happen so, so filthy quickly. So. Always keep in, keep your mind on stretching out your service grid. This is so important. As your entire economy can crash land on that. Speaking about economy, I have decided for this city to go for pastures for my um, economy. Yes, the Crytonians, they don't particularly like that kind of work, but we can safely export all the food that we gain out of that, and meat turns in quite a nice amount of money. It might be not that much per number, but we are producing at a daily basis here, like a couple of hundred denarii. And there's also a production of livestock that we're currently exporting, and these are also worth quite a nice amount of money. But you see, over the course of the time, the buy prices go down, 
the more you export the same. That's a typical thing. So expanding our food production beyond that pasture might be not wise anymore. So we need to stop trading with a couple of people again. Yeah, 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 that's, uh, that's okay. But we're just going to re-enable those trades again. Well, let's see what they'll do out of that. I must inform you that I'm not that uh, fully experienced around the new diplomacy system. That's a pretty new thing for me. So we have new parts of housing, and since that somehow got lost between two episodes, I want to talk about noise pollution real quick. I was so sure that I talked about that in another episode, but it has come to the comment section's attention. So, noise. Certain workshops of yours produce noise, especially the crafting and refining ones, woodcutters, obviously. Some things don't create any noise, like the farms whatsoever and those. The long story short is quite simple here. The people of yours, they prefer to live where it's not that noisy. End of the story. So if you want to keep your subjects happy, you just make sure that the housing you provide is not right next to the noisy parts of the city. And that's that. You just need that lens for uh, for that. And here in this city, for example, I've built a couple of houses which were not ideally placed. You don't need to worry yourself uh, dead serious about that, but you can still crank out a bit more happiness out of your city just like that. It's a very simple way to get things done. Also here, I'm using part of the market and the food stores as extension of my road system as everything which is dirt and gravel in this game is as a matter of fact just traversable road so to speak it's very useful to take advantage of that so i don't know why you guys have not finished the janitor again but we have to finish the janitor's workshop all right so back to the actual topic but <laughs> Smelting iron isn't that much of a big deal. It is just yet another workshop that we're going to set up here. And I'm going to set that up as close as I can to the vicinity of these guys. As is obvious that coal mining and metal smelting are two businesses that go well hand in hand together. So we're going to put that over here. And here we go. Little entrance. And again, furnaces. Alrighty, setting up a couple of workspaces here, there. Slapping in a wall, you know the usuals. Alright, so we're going to put up a couple of auxiliary furnaces here as well. And you already might have or might not have noticed that the ingredient list for this workshop is rather small or easy. You don't have any complicated uh, furniture costs or anything. So metal smelting is really a pretty simple to, um, technology. So here we go. The real realm of Cordelia has collapsed. Okay. You guys do you. And as you see here, our food clock is back on positive again. Yes, our wallet is a little bit emptier than before, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really kill us or anything like that. So we now need to set up a infrastructure or some storage for ore and for metal. So I'm going to get myself like five crates of ore and four, well, let's make three crates of metal. There we go. So now we have to pay money to earn money, but we're just going to import all that and we are going to set up the export already and we are just going to export the uh, 10% over the top. There we go. It has a spoilage rate of 8%, so there we go. That should be just fine. Now, that is technically said pretty much everything you need to do about that. And job is unreachable from the throne and will not be performed. Okay. 
So I don't know why this room is not working out as intended, but we're just going to remove that building and retry. Sometimes that just happens. I'm pretty sure that I did something wrong that I was un unaware of. But yeah. These are the little things that you really need to pay attention to when you are expanding your city. As, like I said, janitors are really extremely important and if you forget about that in the department of your city, you can just easily get yourself into a bit of problems there. So, here we go. That should be now doing the trick. Oh, whoopsie. Of course, it should have a door. Right, right. There we go, fellas. So, still manually cutting those trees, but as you see, it works out just nicely. We still have a couple of homeless people, but that's mostly because we have so many work orders running that aren't fulfilled. I could pick up now a lot more people into my uh, kingdom or city, and I will also do so. Because we, we sure are now at a spot where things can go along quite nicely. We will now gain more and more food out of that. And there's another really nice thing that has been brought to my attention. Warehouses, uh, no, markets also do pick up um, livestock. And here, for example, my pasture doesn't get built because we don't have the necessary livestock. So, sadly, oh, it's still not like that. Uh, yeah, okay. So, here we have now to compare the overlays. And, as you see there, the uh, areas are okay. Really hope that one day we get a better readout of that. But, try to get the markets and food stalls close enough together that they can. That they slightly overlap, basically. All right, let's see, the ore has already been imported. That's also the reason why we're so darn broke, <laughs> but that's okay. You can also safely just export all of the metal at the beginning of your of your ventures. You know what, let's do that, as we really need some serious money by now. Metal is soon gonna be needed for many, many things, but right now there's absolutely nothing wrong with just smacking up all the people in there and just make sure that we're producing metal and selling that off. That's totally okay. There it goes. And now we got 24 people working here. Still got a handful of odd jobbers in the backhand. That's good. All right, so we got lots of things now happening. And most importantly, we have now a really dirty, rotten coal consumption. Yeah. I don't know if I needed to import more. At the end of the day, that might be very, very much the case. We now can expand the city slowly towards the coal mines. But in the short term, that's not a solution. We are going to import the uh, the coal for now as well, and later we're going to introduce mining this way. But on the bright side, we are also churning out a total amount of 19 metal bars per day, if everything goes right. That is a total wealth of, well, something around 2,000 denarii income per day, which is really great. And so our our money issues will be no no issues soon anymore. All right. We can also see that slowly but steadily a little bit of drink seems to enrich in the uh, warehouses. Clothing is still comes in goes out. That's pretty normal, like I said, and we don't need to worry about that too much. More housing is needed. That is also very very normal, and. At this point, we are really at a darn good spot for further expansion. Let's put it down like that. And 
There we go. Okay, extra houses for the workers here. Plenty of food to go around. The new imports go really, really well. And with the metal that we are producing being exported now, we should have no problem with the money gains whatsoever. But we do need that metal very soonish for other projects, and that is mostly upgrading buildings. As you see, most economy buildings can be upgraded one way or another. Breweries can be upgraded. You see here, brewery requires almost 200 metal. Bakery requires almost 200 metal. Lab needs almost... Uh, not nearly as much metal as the others, but... Metal is going to be one of the major points in our upgrade economy. The good point about it is you only need to pay them once. The bad part about it is you still need a pretty large amount of metal there. So pottery goes into a similar venue here. So pottery is necessary for many upgrades as well, as well as furniture. But all in all, we can now kickstart our economy with this really, really well. And we can let that run just for a couple of uh, years, days, whatever, to turn in some denarii. The next big milestone that I want to stretch towards to now is the improved labs. This is very cheap, but it multiplies your research income by I don't know how much, and it strictly makes just that little lab that you got so much more efficient, and therefore I personally see it as one really, really wise choice to beeline towards to. So here we have again exposure to cold. We have a hearth here, so what the problem must be that it's not enough hearth to go around for everybody. So let's check that out. We have a 70% uh, coverage of that. We are lacking a well here, so you always can see that something can be added into the mix. There we go. So we are obviously needing a larger area there. That's always a solution. Just put up more half. Okay. So, let's see. There's again people dying from cold. That's a foolproof sign that we don't have enough uh, service provided in that area. You can always use this as sort of a metric that shows you that a certain service is just not provided enough in that area. It's tragic when somebody dies, but don't get it, uh, don't take it too uh, hard on you. All right, so we have now the metal production running, and we will have in a pretty short amount of time a pretty solid income out of that. The next big step that we're going to take after we're um, good with the metal production will be cut stone, as this is the next luxury material that we're going to work ourselves towards to. But first of all, it's for me always the most important thing to get my economy straight and metal production is a good start, starting stone for that. The only downside is that we need that metal that we're currently exporting later for ourselves, as we are not only upgrading things, we also want we also want to make tools out of that, make weapons out of that, and all those things. So we eventually will need yet another industry for the sake of money earning. That's why. I keep producing those pastures. All right, so I think we, we are good for today with that. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's put those uh, last researchers into the lab. And for the next episode, we will then expand into further um, trades. I think one of the best things to go for next episode might be the introduction of the tool system, but I'll have a look on what's up on the tab up until then. I thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Feel free to drop me your comments down below, and of course a thumbs up or a subscription to the channel would be wildly appreciated. There's also a 
couple of links in the description box. Feel free to check out my Discord server. I'd be really happy to see you there, have a chat. There's also a couple of like-minded gamers there. I really, I'm really sure you would enjoy if you're into that kind of thing. There's also a playlist link for Songs of Six down there, so you can check out the entirety of this tutorial series if you are still currently just watching it episode by episode or you came in new here. That's the stuff you're looking for. And last but not least, check out Patreon, PayPal, and buy me a coffee. I'd be very, very happy if you did so. And a big, big thanks to all you crazy ones that are supporting this channel. I really, really appreciate. Either way, thanks for being still around, because if you're still watching this, you've been through all the ads and all the blah blah from my side, and well, wow, thanks for being around. I hope you had a great time. See you next time.